Let's take a look at how we can add a global grid of lines of latitude and longitude to QGIS, otherwise known as a Graticule. First of all, to get some land on there, we're going to go down to the coordinate box at the bottom of the QGIS window. We'll delete the text and we'll type in world in lowercase. So down here, I'll type world in lowercase and then I'll hit enter. This just gives us a background world map just so we know where we are. We're going to create a graticule and we could do it in lines or we could do it in polygons or points. In this case, I'm going to do a polygon grid. So we'll go to vector and then research tools and then we'll go to create grid. If you're trying this yourself, make sure you do it from a completely blank, fresh, new QGIS project like I did. And I'll hit create grid. From here, we just need to go through the different parameters. The grid type for me here will be rectangle polygon. But you see here, you can choose other options. If you want a line grid, that's fine. Then the grid extent, well, we could enter it manually. But what I'll do here is I'll choose calculate from layer, just so you can see what it does. So the layer is world map, and then it enters values. And you can see this goes to minus 179 degrees to 179.9. .9. What we actually want here though is 180. So we want to go 180 degrees to the west, which is minus 180 degrees to the east, 90 degrees south, which is minus 90, and 90 degrees north. Uh, that EPSG4326, that's just the coordinate reference system we're using. And these little exclamation marks tells us we're doing this in degrees. Sometimes when you do this, if you're using a project that's in meters, so you've got lots of layers that are in meters or feet, you can create a grid using that, but this project is in degrees, which is why it says that. Let's go to horizontal spacing and let's make it a 15 degree grid, horizontally and 15 vertically. So that means there'll be a line of latitude or longitude every 15 degrees. I'll leave the other options blank. You can experiment with them if you like. And then what I'm going to do here is where it says grid, create temporary layer. I could save that. So I could click on the browse button and I could save it to any file type or the default geo package. If I wanted to save this, I would choose that option and save it to somewhere on my computer. I'm only demonstrating this, so I'm not going to save it. I'll click run now and I'll close this. Now we get the grid. And it's filled in and it's not a very nice colour, so I'll double click it and it brings up layer properties. I'll change the symbology, click on simple fill. The fill colour here will be a light blue. Let's make the stroke colour white, click OK and let's drag that underneath. Okay, the world map layer is actually a little bit transparent, so I'm going to double click it and just change it to a green colour and I'll drag and drop the colour to the country lines and I'll click OK. All right, so we've got um, a fairly ugly green, so let's change that quickly, double click it. Let's just make that a bit darker, like that. And I'll drag and drop that colour into the stroke colour too and I'll click OK. OK, that's a bit better. So now, if we want to change the coordinate reference system for the whole map, we can do that quite easily, but let's see what actually happens. So if I go to the EPSG button in the bottom right, then I can go to CRS, it should take you there anyway, and I can go to filter, and that's going to allow you to search for different global map projections, or any projection really. So let's type in Winkle, W-I-N-K, and it's showing up here because I already used it, but if I go down to projected, you'll see it there. So let's choose one of the Winkle Triple ones that comes up. I'll choose World Winkle Triple NGS. So that's the National Geographic Society. That's one of the projections they use. If I click OK, and then let me just zoom to the layer, we can see how it's changed. And it is a global grid, but unfortunately, those graticule lines are not smooth. And that's because these are straight lines between the points spaced at 15 degrees. And we'd usually want to make these smooth. There's a number of different ways we could do this. 
I'll show you the first way, which is a bit of a cheat in a way, uh, because we're not creating any new data. If I double click on grid and go to symbology and then make sure under fill where it says simple fill, I'll select that and we'll change the symbol layer type to geometry generator. And here we're going to use this geometry generator thing to densify the lines. That adds intermediate points which allows them to look smoother. So at the moment it just says dollar sign geometry and all that means is that all we're seeing is the geometry of the layer but we can alter it. We can generate a different geometry. So let's click on the expression button and I'll pull it into screen. So the tool we're looking for in the middle here is Densify. So if I put in Densify, we'll see some options. I'm going to use Densify by count and I'll double click it. I need to make sure geometry is in the brackets. So what I'm going to do here is I'm densifying the geometry by count. So I put in a comma and I would, let's just add say 10 intermediate points to each line and that will make them look more smooth. So if I hit 10, close the bracket, click OK and then apply, see what happens? So if I change that back to 1, or let me just change it back to 0 so there's no intermediate points, it's kind of chunky. If I change it to 10, it's much smoother. I could probably change it to 100, it's not going to do any harm. Okay, probably didn't even notice a the difference there. But I've densified that line so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so let's say we want the grid on top. So one thing I could do really easily here is I could double click the grid layer and let's just go to simple fill and we'll drag and drop the stroke color from the fill color to the stroke. So that means the white lines will go blue. Okay, fine, and click OK. Now we've got a nice background layer for our world. I'll right click the grid layer and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, good. And I'll put it on top. Fine. But what I need to do now is double click the copied layer, go to Geometry Generator, and here I'm going to keep it the same, but I'm going to change the geometry type this time to Line String and hit Apply. And then I'm just going to change the simple line colour to white. And I'm going to hit Apply. Actually, I'm going to reduce the thickness. Yeah, that's fine. So what I did there was... I just created a copy of the layer that had the geometry generator applied and I changed the geometry type from polygon to line string because I only want to show the lines. I'll thicken those lines slightly. There we go. So that's a graticule that's been densified and it's using the geometry generator to do it. If you wanted to actually create a new layer that had been densified, you can click on the little toolbox button. It looks like a cog. And you could type in Densify, and your options there are Densify by Count or Densify by Interval. You know, if you had a data set where you wanted to densify it every 0 0.5 degrees or every metre, you could do that. And that will create a new layer. So that is how you can create a graticule. You could do it with points, lines, polygons. I chose polygons, and then I used the geometry generator to make it look nice and smooth. So hopefully you'll find that useful.